Okay, I'm going in depth in this video, but I promise I'm gonna circle it back and make everything make sense by the end of the video. So here's the thing. With fasting gaining as much popularity as it is right now, the amount of bro science Dude, bro science, yo. The amount of nonsensical garbage that is out there on the internet is absolutely overwhelming. So what I wanna do is I wanna take a very basic topic, the topic of how fasting burns fat, and do a deep dive on it so that people can truly understand how fasting helps your body literally utilize fat as a fuel source. So this is gonna be a great resource for you, but it's also gonna be a great resource for you to share with your friends and share with your family who might be a bit skeptical when it comes down to fasting or just not eating or just eating less in general. So let's talk about a couple different mechanisms and then I'm gonna bridge them all together. So please, please, please stick with me because I promise I will make it all make sense. Okay, first off, we have to start with the increase in what are known as catecholamines. We have an increase in epinephrine and norepinephrine, also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline. What these do is they trigger that fight or flight response. They trigger that response within our body that allows us to react to something that's stressful. Adrenaline is released from the adrenal cortex and it travels around through the bloodstream and it signals different organs to do different things, okay? Then noradrenaline is slightly different. It's not released from the adrenal cortex, it's released from nerve terminals and it ultimately becomes the main neurotransmitter for the sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is the nervous system that we activate when we're stressed out or when we're fasting because when we're not eating, we are triggering our bodies to be in a stressed mode even though it's a preferred stress mode. So it's still triggering that sympathetic nervous system. So that means that noradrenaline is really the one that is causing that effect. Noradrenaline, norepinephrine, they're synonymous. Now, these two things, these two catecholamines, they trigger fat breakdown. And they do this by binding to what are known as beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. When our body is burning fat, it's said to be utilizing what is called beta-oxidation. So when we have this binding to beta-1 and beta-2 receptors, it increases the amount of oxygen that the body can use to combine with fat to ultimately burn fat. And it increases something known as CAMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Okay, maybe you've heard of ATP before, adenosine triphosphate. That's the main energy source in your body. Okay, that's the energy source that's gonna allow you to do anything. Well, cyclic adenosine monophosphate is a portion of ATP. And when we have an increase in that, we have an increase in energy that is produced from fat. So that's a complex breakdown. I'm gonna keep going, and then I'm gonna circle it all so it all makes sense, okay? The next thing is we have an increase in hormone-sensitive lipase whenever we are fasting. Hormone-sensitive lipase triggers what is called lipolysis. Lipolysis is the breakdown of fatty acids to be used for fuel, okay? So without hormone-sensitive lipase, we don't start breaking down fatty acids. We don't break down triglycerides. You see, triglycerides are not bad. They're just the precursor to fat as an energy source. Hormone-sensitive lipase takes the triglycerides and it breaks the triglyceride down into three fatty acids, tri, and a glycerol molecule, triglyceride. So what happens there is now that the fatty acids are broken down, they can be used for fuel. They're not in their storage form as a triglyceride. So fasting massively increases this hormone-sensitive lipase. And hormone-sensitive lipase is gonna play a big role in a minute in this video, so please pay attention. The next thing is we have a big increase in glucagon when we're fasting. Glucagon is the opposite of insulin. You see, insulin is absorptive. Insulin causes us to store whatever we're eating, it causes us to store carbohydrates, and it causes us to build fat. That's what insulin does. It's not bad, it's just necessary, and it does some not so advantageous things. Okay, then we have glucagon, which is the opposite. Glucagon triggers the release of those to be used for fuel, the release of carbohydrates, the release of the fats, so that they can actually be broken down. So without glucagon signaling the release, then hormone-sensitive lipase can't ever do its job. So now let's talk about how they all work together. And here's where the light bulb's gonna go off and it all makes sense. So the only place of regulation of fatty acid oxidation in fat tissue is at the level of hormone-sensitive lipase. You see, hormone-sensitive lipase is in your tissues. It's in your fat tissue. It's there already. It's just in somewhat of an inactive state. So the only place that fat burning can occur the only place that fatty acid oxidation can start to occur 
is at the level where hormone-sensitive lipase is. So without hormone-sensitive lipase being there, you don't have any way to ultimately burn fat. So what happens is under fasting conditions, that glucagon that I was talking about just a minute ago, ends up triggering a massive release of hormone-sensitive lipase. It promotes the active form of hormone-sensitive lipase. So it's like the body says, wait a minute, there's glucagon, it's signaling the breakdown of fats, so let's jack up hormone-sensitive lipase, okay? So under fasting conditions, that happens. Then what happens is epinephrine comes into the equation. Remember epinephrine? Talked about him at the beginning of the video. Okay, he comes in and he triggers all kinds of craziness and promotes the even further production of hormone-sensitive lipase in its active form. Now we've got a bunch of the active form of hormone-sensitive lipase, all because glucagon combined with it, and now epinephrine is combining with it. So now that we have this shift, the body is literally in fat-burning mode. So what happens is now the fatty acids that are there in your fat tissue, the adipose tissue, they become broken down. Okay, that hydrolysis occurs, okay, that lipolysis, that hydrolysis of the fat. So now the fatty tissue has now turned into fatty acid molecules, okay? Fat tissue is different from fatty acid molecules. Fatty acids are ready to be used for fuel. Fat tissue is the ugly fat yellow stuff that's on your body. Okay, so now this is starting to occur, starting to break down, and it's broken down into fatty acids and glycerol, once again. The glycerol heads to your liver, and it goes through a process known as gluconeogenesis where it kind of gets converted into somewhat of a carbohydrate, very small, not too much of a usable form. Then the fatty acids are sent out to various tissues in the body to ultimately be burned as a fuel source. Okay, so it doesn't just immediately turn into this fat that is put into the bloodstream that we're burning. Okay, it's a whole defined process of where the fat tissue actually turns into a fatty acid that then travels throughout the body and is used as fuel. Now, there's one other component, and I'm not gonna to touch on this one too much because I've talked about it in a lot in other videos, but those fatty acids, once you've been in fasting mode for a long period of time, they get converted by the liver into something known as a ketone body. And a ketone body is a much more efficient fuel source. So over a period of time, once you have already had the hormone-sensitive lipase triggering the breakdown of fats, after a period of time, your body starts to turn those into ketones because it has now become so conditioned to burning fat, it now shifts all the mechanical machinery within your body to be pre-programmed to want to burn fat. So the ketone production starts to allow your body to become even more efficient at this process. So that is how fasting literally burns fat. And that's how your body burns fat in the first place. But fasting with its massive increases in epinephrine and massive increases in glucagon ultimately ends up being the biggest, most powerful way to get your body to get into that fat burning state. So anyhow, this is the scientific basic explanation of why fasting burns fat. So tune out all the bro science, tune out all the dudes out there that are talking about how fasting is great because of all these random benefits they're finding on Wikipedia. Understand the body, understand your body, and know what works for you. And share this with your family so that they know you're not crazy when you skip breakfast with them. I'll see you in the next video.